Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. The new screensavers is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. And by Joby. Joby's Gorilla Pod is the signature flexible tripod amongst leading photographers and journalists. Currently, Joby's transitioning to a new production center, so they're not accepting orders. But if you leave your email with them for an update on product availability and when they're back, you'll get 15% off your first order. Go to joby.com and enter twit at checkout. Saving the rainforest with old smartphones, the best Qi chargers, and a smartphone that fits in a mint tin. Live from the Twit Eastside Studios in beautiful Petaluma, it's the new screensavers. I'm Leo Laporte. I am Father Robert Bellis, sir. No, no, you're... <laughs> yes, sir, Witten. I got to do it in, in Faroese. But yep. first, I want to thank Leslie for doing the show open. Can I tell you something about Leslie? I made the worst mistake. <laughs> I made the worst mistake because Leslie came here with Topher. She, he's going to show course, us some stuff yes. that he made. And I and I did the really the worst. I basically went all Harvey Weinstein on her. I didn't. Oh. I know I didn't hit oh. on her. I just said, oh, oh you must have been... Topher dragged oh. you. You're probably not a geek. She said, well, actually, I'm a nuclear scientist, <laughs> and my startup is building personal nuclear power plants. Okay. I, MIT I, graduate. She's the second nuclear scientist we've had in the studio. What? Yeah. Where was the first Alan one? Alan Malventano. Oh, that's right. That's he, right, yeah. He worked on submarines yeah. running the nuclear plants on the nuclear subs. So we've got two now. <laughs> We have to put them up on the wall. <laughs> anyway, I feel like an idiot, uh, and I apologize, Leslie. We have to have her back. Yeah, because I, I would love to talk about that. Yeah, that's what I said. Forget Topher. Let's get Leslie on the show. No, Topher's got. <laughs> oh you wow, you were amazing. <laughs> you saw what Topher's doing, and you immediately ID'd it. I, it's it's a uh, it's a passion of mine to make things out of things. He's a maker. He takes old landfills. stuff and does something yep. really important with it. Before we do that, though, we, I mentioned Faroese earlier today. Johnny Jett, my travel guru mm -hmm. on the radio show, introduced me to a new site, a really cool site. So, you know Google Translate, how on Google? Of course. Oh, yeah. Thing, they service. talked about how the new Google Pixel Buds will translate, mm -hmm. simultaneous translation. And the poor folks in the Faroe Islands, which is up in the North Sea, I think it's a, it's a territory of Denmark, felt bad because Faroese, their language, a language spoken by almost 50,000 people, is not part oh, of Google come Translate. On, Google. So they created a website called Faroe Islands Translate. But this is hysterical because <laughs> what it does is it wakes up some poor random Faroese and tells them. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Here's the English. What? <laughs> record it on your smartphone in Faroese. So, so this is not machine learning. This is human learning. This is, it's, but it's okay, awesome. Good. So they sent me, they sent me one. And I'm going to play it for you right now. I kind of felt bad because it was Saturday night uh, in the Faroe Islands. And I hope I'm not I'm not keeping her up. I tweeted this. She actually recorded this, and I think she recorded this. Oh, we brought the oh, site down. Oh, I think down. we may have killed it. <laughs> have we brought the site down? Well, oh. it's it's an island of, of under fifty thousand people, and I think we just sent the internet toward it. <laughs> the whole trunk, <laughs> the whole North Sea cable Sorry about is that. now saturated with screensavers viewers who are trying to get well, their favorite. In, in their language, I think you are Leo, is it Leo LaPoche? I Le, have it, Le, I have it if it would load. But I, then I got one for you too, which I'll play in a second. But soon, okay, here. Do you get my, you're not getting my audio? Oh, we gotta start it over. Let's do it, here, here it is. They said, I didn't ask for this one. After I did my translation, I think they figured out I mentioned it. And ah. they recorded one special for me. They got her up in the middle of the night. Hey. Hey. Et Leo la poste. 
Technofreya Mavidin. I'm the Technofreya Mavidin. Uh, I I'm not going to I am the Technofreya Mavidin. That's, that's Now I'm thinking Google should do this for all languages because that would be awesome. Well, just I decided wake some random person up and ask them to translate something. <laughs> I decided to get one done for you. Uh-oh. And they just completed it. Look, see it oh, says no. I sent the text then a random Faroese was found fumbling complete because they start fumbling for a camera phone and here's the video that I had made for you. Oh, it's dead too. Come on. All the links. Come, there we go. Kusu vi mer er det färje Robert digitala Jesuiterin. Jesuiterin. I do like that. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> now I, I should mention that while you're waiting, they will give you a tour of their island, and it's that's the angle. That's marketing. actually brilliant. That's brilliant. brilliant marketing. Well done. Kusu vi mer er det färje Robert. Digitale Jesu Itterin. So Fire oh, Rubbish is here. Jesu Itterin. <laughs> I'm just going to use that from now on. Isn't that? I think it's brilliant. I just love it. And, and I, do, I do feel bad because I think the entire... I don't think it was ready for that many people to I think it. we probably sent five or six. You just woke people. up the entire island. The all island. fumbling for their phones. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Leo, you just did a denial of sleep attack on an entire island. <laughs> F-A-R-O-E. At Faroe Islands... Translate.com. Come on, keep them away. <laughs> it's like a it's like a charity. It's like uh, a game now. <laughs> marathon. All right, big news this week. Uh, quite a few. The Equifax story, the story that just keeps on giving. Oh, yeah. So Equifax, which is one of four, I found out there's one more that I didn't know about called mm -hmm. Anovis. Four uh, companies that specialize in collecting all your financial transactions and then selling financial information about you to mm -hmm. other companies. They're called credit reporting agencies. CRCs. Instead of digital doofuses. Anyway, Equifax, as we know, I think we've reported many times, did not do a very good job of securing your stuff. There was a, uh, they were using a, uh, a um, Apache... Uh, Struts. Is it a yeah. plug-in or yeah. a capability called Struts that had a flaw in March. They didn't patch the flaw. A few months later, a smart hacker said, wow, you know what? They've not patched their Apache Struts and exfiltrated what we think now is 145 million. Mm -hmm records. Now, given that that's close to the total number of adults in the United States, yeah, yeah. that means everybody, your social security, we don't know because they're not telling us, but I think your social security, your driver's license, your financial address, records. history, <laughs> you know, Brian them. Krebs yeah. this week showed how you could get your financial history out of them by guessing a pin, which is based on your birth date. Anyway, their security is terrible. It's not great. Further insult to injury, the IRS gave them a no bid contract for $7 million because of the breach. The IRS didn't want to get phony refund requests, so they contracted with Equifax for $7 million to let them know if the requests were phony. Now, they suspended that. So Thank they, God. They, they did suspend, <laughs> but it's not canceled. It's just kind of holding. Until, until all the attention yeah. goes away. So the, the latest thing, a security researcher goes to the Equifax site. There's a page. You know, Equifax, as any credit reporting agency will do, has a page where you can dispute your credit report, items in your credit report. Right. So he went to the dispute page. And it turns out it loaded a plugin which tried to get him to download a phony Adobe Flash player that was an ad injector. It was basically malware, an ad injector. Equifax's excuse is, well, it wasn't us. That's just a third party that we put on our page. Sorry, that's not how it works. <laughs> when you have when you have messed up as thoroughly as Equifax, it is now your responsibility. All of your contractors, all of your third parties, you are responsible for what they are doing with your data. At what point can we just say pull the plug on Equifax? Well, that's that's the thing. That's what got, has a lot of people upset because now that all of this news is out, people are starting to say, "Wait a minute. These CRCs, what why do they have my data? Did I did I agree to this? Did, yes. Did well, I, you did. Anytime yeah. you go for a credit card, a loan of any mm. kind, if you want to rent a home, if you uh, buy a cell phone, you know, when you buy a cell phone, they they ask for, what do they ask for? Your social security number, because they're going to do a credit report Which on they you. shouldn't. In the fine print, which no one reads, of course, it says, and we will be reporting how you do in your payments, your financial information, to the credit reporting agencies, which are Equifax, TransUnion, uh, Experian, mm -hmm. and now this and new one, Innovus. Right. So, to, you me, agree to be fair, to you want that. I mean, that, you have that's, to have it. How that's going to help you get a loan. It's yeah. going to help you get a credit card, a mortgage, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Even a job. When you go for a new job, they will check your credit report. When you when you try to get a, a new device from a carrier, they will check your credit. Yeah. So, that does help to make you modern have to. life possible. But we need these things. Yeah. But I think we also need very strict restrictions very on them. So. And 
top-notch security. There's just no excuse if they're going to have all this information, which we didn't give them. If they're going to sell our information, which we didn't give them permission to, they at least should lock it down, please. And don't put adware on and, your site. And that's Come what on. Congress is uh, finally, because there's enough pressure I on hope them. So. They're finally coming out and saying, hey, maybe maybe this should be an opt-in program. Maybe, maybe people have to say, look, this is what I'm willing to share. And maybe we should use the, the t typical process of a credit freeze as the norm. In other words, that should be the norm. I have to, I have there to, you go. You have to give everyone it. permission who wants to access my credit That's report. a great idea. Yeah. Make the credit freeze the default. Yep. And, then, and you only, if you give permission, can they give it. Oh, I like that. They'll hate it because that's how they make money, that's how they selling make money. your stuff. I thought of you. I don't know why when I saw this uh, story. Facebook has now, you can order food on Facebook. <laughs> why did I think of you? <laughs> Face food. Face food. They're ah. not going to start their own foodler. They're going to partner with a bunch of like Grubhub. As and, you do. Yes. And Uber Eats and all of these. But you can, uh, I haven't, have you got it yet on your Facebook? Uh, you know, I use Facebook probably once every month. I, See, I, I think I the idea, I, I think it's kind of brilliant. Uh, Facebook wants, they want to be the stickiest site in the world. They want you to yep. live on Facebook. They want you to spend every moment on the phone on Facebook. But there's a problem with that. You've got to eat. So, so now you don't have to leave to eat. You can stay in Facebook. I, I'm sure there was some exec at Facebook who had the roundtable meeting and they said, hey, you know what we see a lot? People sharing pictures of their food. Well, wouldn't <laughs> it be great if someone saw some, what someone else was eating and say, hey, I want to eat that. Here's a button I can push. Uh, okay, okay, I, I can in see all that. Seriousness, I, I'm not going to do it. This is where all the messaging platforms are yeah. going to go. Apple's adding uh, pay your friend to Apple Pay. Uh, and, and instant messaging on Apple. I think you're going to see, like, did I call it instant messaging? Am I uh, from 1998? AOL, AOL called, they want their, their tech back. <laughs> <laughs> They, now, they, they're getting it back but, in a couple Leo, of weeks. But Leo, what does this say that the future of all social is to help us find lazier ways of getting food? The buying crap. Oh. Yeah. yeah, we don't have to get up off our couch anymore. I, I don't know about but, that. But I think young people, I look at my 14-year-old, yeah. this whole, this suits his way of life. He wants to play Cuphead and never get up from the sofa. I don't think that's a good Have idea. the food come to him. I, I, we are both techies. I don't like that. That yeah. sounds really, really bad. But he's almost beat Cuphead. Really? Yeah, pretty I, impressive. I've gotten like through two <laughs> levels and then I gave up. He's like almost done. <laughs> I, it's amazing. Oh. Uh, Wozniak has launched his own online tech platform. I think that's cool. I don't know anything about it. We'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, he, he kind of wants to keep his foot in the game. That's the same reason why he co-sponsored last year's Silicon Valley Comic Con. Uh, he wants the geeks to remember that he's still a force, and he still is. It's just it's kind of been haphazard. This is his way of saying, okay, was if, you, if you, you want the Waz experience, it's yeah. going to start here. Was you. Was you. All right. The, we'll see. We'll follow it with interest. There are a lot of, these are called MOOCs. Yep. Massively online, open courseware, something like that. Uh, we'll, we'll follow it with interest. I, I'd love to it's learn something. It's like a something. university with millions of people who you wouldn't actually want to know in real life. Yeah, but Waz I love, and I would love yeah. to know Waz in real life. Actually, I do, and, uh, and you would too. Um... Did you go? You went on Monday to Oculus Connect. I did. Tell us about that. Okay, so um, I, I've done Oculus Connect before, and I, I'm not big on VR. You and is it I, a developers conference. It's what a is developers it? conference. Okay. You or I and I are sort of the same mind here, which is VR is it's great as a tech demonstrator, but I would if I could only choose one, I would much rather have AR. This idea of overlaying information on the real world is just so much better, as far as I'm concerned. It sounded like what this was, this OC4, Oculus Connect 4, was Zuckerberg coming out on the stage and immediately pushing games to the back end. He almost didn't mention them. But only that's all anybody is doing right now. With but VR. that's not what he wants. He wants educational. He wants medical. He wants business collaboration. That's that's what he wants. He's, he wants to go to Puerto Rico and laugh. Okay, at people. Yeah, that was tone deaf. That yeah. was horrible. <laughs> that was they, not good. Mark. What they were trying to do is they, they were trying to show off a new feature that they have that Spaces. allows other people yeah. to see what you're doing in VR space. Yeah. It, did they talk about that at Connect? They did. Did they, they apologize? Uh, no, no, not at all. In fact, all the journalists were kind of hoping, well, are you going to mention Puerto Rico? But so I, I understand what happened. If you're in the VR, yep. you don't see your weird-looking, doofy avatar. You just see the horror of, that's around you, and you get some empathy for the people who are going through this. But what he broadcast was his avatar yep. and uh, his partner's avatar. There they are, Rachel and, and Mark, in this sad situation, it and it, it really strange. looked like Silicon Silicon Valley 
was tone deaf. Yeah. It, it looked like Silicon yeah. Valley was just being Very insensitive. And, and here's yeah. the thing about that. That technology, if if they had just done a VR experience the empathy thing of, of yeah. the disaster, that would have been fantastic. That's that. educational. Yeah. If they had just done the spaces with people talking about the disaster, that would have been somewhat educational. Putting those two together makes it look like it's a cheesy promotional stunt. At one point, one of the Facebook sec execs said, can we go back to California now? Yeah. That was not nice. That was, That's yeah. mean. Exactly. So... Uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, we're going to see a, an application of VR in a second that's actually very, very cool in the rainforest. They, they do have a couple of pieces of tech that you might like. They've got the new Go, a two hundred dollar headset. It's it's uh, so standalone, not so really for gaming. I don't understand. Is this like a daydream? What this? Yeah. How so, could it be standalone? Uh, There's no phone needed. No phone needed. So everything is built into the device. It's fabric colored. It's lower. Is there end. a computer in it? Yes. So so it's you know it's not really. This is not designed to be the gaming VR headset. This is spaces and social and and light VR. Yeah, but boy, at that price with no computer, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Right. And, Did and you try it? I, well, I, I got uh, I got my hands on it. It wasn't a working unit. Okay. The one that I did actually get to play with was Project Santa Cruz, which is the new high end. That thing is amazing. Uh, again, I'm not big but on. But that's going to be tethered to a computer. No, it's it's entirely untethered. Untethered. Oh. I don't. I, they did not tell me how long the battery lasts. Yeah. But it does have. It's, it's high performance. It has the sensors built into the headset, so you don't have to set anything up around the room. It can even detect when your your controllers are behind you. Oh, that's Super interesting. Super frame rate, wow. very smooth. Felt good. Wasn't so heavy. Uh, but, you know, I, I do want to see what the final version of it right, looks like. Right. And the nausea factor, I hate to bring it I up, but I think that's sick. one of the things that's holding VR back. You uh, yeah, get sick. I actually, yeah, you can show, I, I took a, a gander uh, that's to not the press room. not show it. Well, no, that, oh, I didn't throw up. But, <laughs> so this is, this is Winlands 2, and this, I mean, unfortunately, that, this was the last demo I so played. So this is the big problem I have, by the way, with VR, because movement can't be natural because you don't have the space to walk around right, right now. Right. So you do this weird thing with the controllers where you say, I want to go there, like you're swinging on vines. I guess that's okay. It was it was fun. I mean, yeah. I, I, I this was a, a done by developers who will have this game ready by next year. That's probably a good way to do it, because at least it, the vines are kind of integral to the moving around. Right, right. It's not like... And then I fell to my death. <gasps> this is what I did a oh, lot. Oh, that'll make me I sick. Did. I, did, I did get ill, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. after about 10 minutes of Because emotion this. is untethered to your actual physical body. I felt my knees were swaying as I was landing on these platforms. I and mean, that's how, how yeah. much my brain was full. Isn't that wild? But it was so smooth. And they've released so many new developer tools to help these developers actually improve frame rate and game experience. So Oculus... This even, would be a great Spider-Man game. Oh, I know, right? Oh, or Attack on Titan. That's the other thing I was thinking of, you know, yeah. flying with, uh, with cables. Uh, you know, really well done tech. Again, I am not sold on VR. I would much rather have AR, but I like what they're doing in the space. Uh, you know, I'll, I'm willing to withhold judgment. I've said negative things about yeah. VR. If the, but it, but we haven't seen the end of the game yep. yet. Yep. And if you could get it untethered, uh, if you could actually move around, I agree with you, though. AR, in fact, AR, you don't get as sick because you have the real world yeah. in addition to whatever's projected on it. And I think that grounds you a little bit. And it helps with the nausea, right? Anyway. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not the end of the line. We'll find out more, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that... Uh, that Mark is back from Puerto Rico. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, actually, something really inspiring. Topher White from the Rainforest Connection will show us how he's using old, discarded I love this cell idea. phones this is a great to idea. save the world. All right? Pretty cool. First, a word from our spot. Oh, and then we're going to show you this. I can't wait to see this. Jelly. Jelly phone. A little jam. That is... Hello. It's so... T that Hello. is a Derek Zoolander phone. It really is. It's, it's, anyway, but it's, it's cheap. to space. Father Robert has a review. But first, a word from our sponsor, Rocket Mortgage. If you're getting a home loan, prepare to descend back in time to the, to the 20th century. You go, you go, you might as well put a top hat on and go into the bank, maybe some white gloves and a cravat. And you go into the, you look like the Monopoly man. Actually, the guy you're talking to looks like the Monopoly man. And you say, please, sir, may I have a loan? And then he goes through, I swear, this is my experience. It was only three years ago. It feels like it was 100. He goes through a sheaf of pay. Well, I, uh, let's see. Uh, here's a loan you might qualify for. And then he, I kid you not, took out a calculator and went, now, let's see, 30 months, six months times. Uh, he did the amortization tables. 
that was just the beginning. Then we went away. He said, all right, well, I need all this paperwork. We got the paperwork. Then we went on vacation. That was a big mistake because then they said, this was a big bank, you know, like the biggest bank, the one with the stagecoach and the horses. <laughs> and then for the next four or five weeks, every few days, they, hey, you know, we'd love pay stubs from that job you had in 1992. Things like that. We were faxing them stuff. I had, we, had a, we were on vacation. We called her, uh, Lisa's sister, to fax them stuff. And we almost didn't get the loan to the point where the, the seller said, guys, I can't, I'm going to sell it to somebody else. This is old. The new way, Quicken Loans. First of all, right after that big bank, they're the number two lender in the country. I think $92 billion. But really, they're number one if you look at the J.D. Power Customer Satisfaction Awards. Number one year after year as a primary mortgage originator and as mortgage servicing, people love Quicken Loans. Quicken Loans is transforming Detroit, right? I mean, they are, they, they are amazing company, really well run. They also, and I love them for this, love geeks. So they created a loan process designed for the geeks. They call it Rocket Mortgage. Lifts the burden of getting a home loan. It's fast. Look, here's what you need to know. It's all online. And it's not a month or a week or a day or even hours. You can get a loan in minutes. You don't have to go into the attic to find paperwork because... They have trusted partners with all the financial institutions. You just say, here's my name, here's my address, here's my serial number, and, and they say, do we have permission to query the banks? You say yes, and boom, based on your income, your assets and your credit, within a minute or two, they're gonna crunch the numbers and give you the loans you qualify for. You choose the term, you choose the rate, you choose the down payment, and you are done. You're approved. This is so fast you could do it at the open house and buy the house before you leave. And let me tell you, that is important. In, in, in this day and age, it's hard to get a house. It's really a seller's market. You have a real advantage if you've got Rocket Mortgage in your pocket. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Maybe you're not buying today, bookmark it. Put it in your Safari or your Chrome or whatever so you know when you're at that open house. Oh yeah, just go to rocketmortgage.com slash NSS and be approved in minutes. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org, number 30. 30. We thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support. I just walked out of the frame. <laughs> Come with me, Robert. Come what do we call you? We're the Ferga Gijo Jesuit. Ferga Wow, I already forgot it. <laughs> I know. It's Faroese. We're going to say hi to Topher White hey, with the Rainforest Connection. I know the Rainforest Connection. Hey. That's a great That's organization. Good to hear. Thank you. Uh, you're trying to save the rainforest, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The rainforest, forests all over the place. Deforestation um, is the number one cause of climate change. Uh, number two, but uh, that definitely counts. What's number one? Counts for, uh, energy <laughs> in general. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> energy in general. <laughs> but, yeah. I would. I, I actually, I've been talking to the Rainforest Connection since they first started. I remember they told me it's the three C's: it's chains, mm -hmm. chainsaws, cows and cars, right? Yeah, I mean, actually, it's, uh, it's, it's roads. So in our case, we're saying that, look, if, if it's the second largest contributor to climate change, almost 20% of all the carbon every year comes from deforestation, it's actually the roads that are the cause of that, and logging is what causes the roads. The roads into the forest yeah. so they could take the trees out. Yeah, because logging is the most uh, lucrative one, so 90% of logging in the rainforest is illegal. So if you can actually stop that, which is a mandate to do, because it's illegal, then you can have a big impact So outside. how did you come up with this idea? Uh, this all kind of started because I went to Indonesia as, uh, as a volunteer at a Gibbon Reserve. Uh, actually, here's an image of this right here. Uh, and this one place that I visited was, um, was just kind of actually spending all their time trying to oh. protect the outskirts of this, uh, this reserve from logging and realized that they had cell phone service out there. They had like no electricity, no running what? water, no roads. But they have cell service? It's cell service uh, in the jungle. There's no roads out there, you know, no, no running water. You no see this stuff. a lot because it's easy yeah. to do infrastructure that's wireless. Yeah. Now, you know, one of the interesting things about this is I've been hearing about this since I was a child. Mm -hmm. deforestation, the deforestation is happening. And all of the, the organizations that formed were about dealing with the consequences, like this, you know, mm -hmm. finding the animals and making sure that they were safe and, and perhaps trying to cut down in the amount of illegal logging but we haven't really had the technology or the political will to do something about actually stopping. Well, it's now we true. have the laws. We just need the. We need somebody out there watching. Is what that, we need. Yeah, it's a big place. It's no, a, I mean it's 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 the, the, the laws give us a mandate, not us even. The people on the ground. There's people there who would stop it if they knew where it was and if they knew they had support. So you're saying loggers kind of basically sneak in? And uh, they don't have to sneak in. They drive in with big old trucks, <laughs> you know. Uh, and but there's no one. That, it's a it's a f empty space. It is. So empty where space, is this yeah. thing you built? Oh yeah. So basically, this is the uh, this, this idea. Love. This is look uh, at this. Well, yeah, the whole idea. So basically, uh, it has to be solar powered, right? Because we take these old phones, we put them up in trees, they listen to all the sounds of the forest, and they can pick out the sounds of chainsaws, 
uh, and logging trucks and things like that. Uh, here's kind of a dramatization of it all if you want to see it. So you're and actually, these are listening devices. And it, you know, picks up the sound. and But they're so high up that the, the loggers aren't aware of them. Uh, that is correct, yeah. I mean, it's hard to see stuff up in a tree. Um, Especially if it's shaped it like, like this, because yeah. it, it just looks like another set of leaves, basically. <laughs> Pretty Father much. Robert but came inside. in the room and he looked at it and said, oh. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? You said you knew, like, because you're a maker. I, you, I thought it was a solar-powered en environmental sensor. But look, see, so sort the, of is. Yeah. It, it, well, look, we can do some pretty high-end stuff, right? So because there's cell phone networks, there's no reason for us to build some super high-end piece of technology because there's 150 million cell phones thrown away every year. And no one wants so that cell phone. phone right? yeah, this, is, this is like uh, maybe an Android phone from 2007, yeah. Huawei. Yeah. Uh, but the funny thing is that it's so simple to put together. You know, um, you can sort of see another anima animation of that over here. So you but have power and you have audio. Uh, you sort of connect together. to the microphone jack, right? Uh, do you run and you run Mr. Cu some custom software on it? Oh yeah, we just yeah we write an app on there that runs uh, and it streams up to the cloud and we can use AI to, to pull it out. But like the funny thing is that this is pretty easy to put together. This this one here was put together by a guy named Lucas in a, in a school, and Lucas is uh, is like nine years old. Oh this my god! This phone is god. ten years old. I thought that was kind of funny. The old phone is older than <laughs> the, the phone like, is older than the kids. And it's three D so. printed parts. Uh, yeah, we use like, basically the whole idea is we want to be able to use stuff that they can assemble there in the field. Like we're never going to save a ton of rainforest if we're the ones building it and sending it out there. So that's why we use old phones. That's why we use these boxes. How many do you want to get out there? Oh, I mean, um, well, it doesn't take that much actually. So. The thing with sound is that you can pick up sounds of chainsaws from, you know, a kilometer away, right? Or, you know, also through a half a mile. Thing, yeah. And so, you know, we have some of these things up in, uh, in sort of, you know, at roads, at perimeter. So just a few dozen can protect thousands of square miles if you have people to respond. And I love this design. Idea. So we've got this. How much, how much voltage, how much power can this create, this solar panel create? Uh, this is, an, well, these things actually, because we stream all the audio to the cloud, they have to create a lot. So this is, uh, this is actually, we have to generate about 40 uh, watt hours per 24 hour so period. So 40 watt hours. And then inside that box, you've got some sort of converter to get that down to five volts. I'm yep. betting you have a bunch of 18650 cells in there that just convert uh, it into you using got it. power. Actually, we're, well, this is sort of the uh, older version. We got another one over here. Oh, it's over here somewhere. We're, uh, we're switching to a new battery technology, actually. So those are 26650s. But, yeah. oh, okay. but we're actually switching Ooh. to lithium iron phosphate. Lithium iron phosphate. Uh, yeah, it's going to give you more recharge cycles. And more recharge cycles. Nice. It's more environmentally friendly. Uh, we don't want to put up situations where a battery could, you know, combust in a tree. That kind of defeats the purpose. Oh, yeah. But, that uh, would be good. but no, in general, that's, that's the idea is that we can, we want these things to last for years. They're like satellites, but they're working How really hard. How high up does this have to be? It doesn't so have to, to be that high. Because, I mean, well, it's in the middle the of the canopy, canopy though, right. right? To get the sun? In the canopy. So that's why you have really? this bizarre design, right? So these are actually recycled, uh, you know, um, shards that we get from a partner down in Santa Clara. So um, those aren't even new. Those are these recycled. aren't even new. Well, they're not actually recycled. So they're like cutoffs from these high-end panels right. on backpacks and things like that. Oh, I get it. They're just yeah. extra. There's extra, and then we can solder these things together and cut it out. And you know, this is still kind of. It's a great idea. <laughs> it really is. But uh, no, at the end of the day, we I think that there's no reason for us to be building hardware. Like how we're going to really scale is that people out there are already on their second or third generation phones. They're going to be able to put these things together themselves. Phones will get more environmentally, uh, you know, stable and environmentally. Uh, um, so you, you want know, you want people like what was his name Lucas? You want him to download plans for this? How do, how can how can people get involved? Well, so I mean, at the moment, the big thing for us is that the hardware you can do a lot with uh, with not that much hardware, right? So uh, we really want to focus on the software side of things. We're a tech company. We're going to try and find a way we can be scalable. Um, and so I think at the end of the day, conservation can be as simple as uh, somebody sort of downloading an app off in the field and, and putting a phone on a tree themselves. But that means that the way we want people to be involved is by downloading the apps here and, and getting into it. You mentioned earlier that the narrative hasn't really changed in like yeah. 30 years, you know? And I think that's because there's not a lot of originality when it comes to how to stop, uh, stop this stuff. And the only way we can make the rainforest persist and survive is if people here are able to care about it. But what we care about has changed over the past 20 years. Right. It has to be immediate. And so the same way we can send alerts to people on the ground, we can send alerts to people here. You can get an alert when a chainsaw goes off. We can tell you when a monkey goes through the forest. You can connect to the okay, forest we, in real time. We have to talk about that. Okay, so yeah. I, I, I like the tech. I, yeah. I love putting stuff like this together. But yeah. the big question is, what do I get out of this? So I've put, I've put an old cell phone up 100, 150 feet up into the canopy. Yeah. It's now connected to the cellular network. Mm -hmm. What am I getting and what can I do with it? Okay, so at this point, it's now streaming audio up into the cloud. We're analyzing it for anything, mostly chainsaws, locking trucks, but really any species you're looking for, there's an AI model that's going to help pick that out over time. So it's not just logging. I can not actually, just what, a machine learning to pick out individual species? Sure, and right now it's just <laughs> a few species, but we're going to make it hopefully very easy over the next few months for even ecologists to be able to sort of add species to it, and that can scale out across the whole system. So the idea behind it is that if you want to, if you want to get people to care about the forest, we have to turn the forest into a real experience for them. And that's not going to come from, you know, 
uh, telling them all the bad news and the rest. It's about them actually having a personalized connection to what's there. Well, to that end, you've got a VR app. Yeah, hey, that's that's kind of idea. Let's, so let's get our daydream on here. So right? I mean, do, do we have the daydreams? Oh no, we will just do it on the. Uh, we could show it on the Apple TV. Oh yeah, hey, cool. So, so hey, Rainforest Connection. I mean, basically every phone you put up there. Uh, you can uh, so anyone can download this app, right? Now. Yeah, it's on the App Store. It's called Search uh, for Rainforest iOS Connection. And Android or iOS, iOS and Android. Oh. So what's it called? Search. It's called uh, Rainforest Connection. Rainforest Connection. So search, search for Rainforest, Rainforest Connection. Yeah, and so the whole idea behind this is that every phone you put up there, yes, it's sending alerts. Wait a minute, where is that? That's in. This is Brazil. Brazil. So this is a live stream coming out of Brazil. Uh, Audio stream with an old phone, basically a phone like this, oh, uh, up in the goodness. up in, now the up in the trees. We should say the phone doesn't stream live video only because that would be a huge amount of bandwidth. So yeah. this is a still picture. Yeah, but that's real time audio. It's real time audio, and, and that's what's being analyzed for all the stuff. So this is actually in a very dangerous area. This is a tree in a, in a Tembe reserve in Brazil, where this tribe is actually more or less taking back their area um, militantly from um, from illegal loggers and drug cartels. Uh, and so this is, whenever there's a truck that goes by, they get an alert, and then um, they're able to respond in real time. So you're alerting the tribe? You're alerting the tribe, yeah. I, um, I would assume that an internal combustion engine or a chainsaw makes a very distinctive sound. Oh, yeah. Well, um, you know a chainsaw yeah. does. You it can does. hear those a mile And so away. this tribe, I mean, it's a really amazing story. But this is the, kind of the whole principle, right, is that if we want to save the rainforest, it's not going to be us to go out there and do it. There's people there who would do it. These tribes are amazing. This guy, this guy here, this is the... Uh, is the Tembe warrior who, uh, who was able to sort of, um, they're responding to, uh, to alerts on a, on a regular basis. I want to stay space, right on to this guy. That is oh, awesome. No, but check this out. So like these, these guys there, if we want to fight wow. climate change, we're always thinking about energy. You know, we're thinking about how we can like, cut right. down our energy footprint, which is important. But there's people out there in the field where they can have a bigger impact on affecting climate change than, you know, dozen engineers at Tesla. Yeah. Just because they have the, that much in front of them. If we can just build small, pretty unimpressive technical tools to make a difference. Now, who pays for the for bandwidth on this? I mean... Uh, well, it's actually not that not that bad. Uh, I have to really give a shout out to T-Mobile. Uh, weren't they? They aren't philanthropically helping us, but I got to tell you that sort of unlimited um, that unlimited international <laughs> it works everywhere is pretty great. That's for, what I uh, use. Streaming things out of the forest. Yeah. So um, save uh, save rainforest as you go plan. It's true. Uh, it's throttled, so it's not great for uh, for streaming video, but we're streaming audio, so no worries. You know, yeah, 2G is plenty for yeah, audio. Yeah. stream is it's what 13k maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, no, it's even less than that. So I think it's um, we're assuming maybe like two or three kilobytes a second. Oh, gee. Um, it's perfect. Yeah, and get it out. So there. how many of these are out there? Uh, so at the moment there are a little less than seventy out there in the field, but that's enough for us to protect what we think is uh, between three and four thousand uh, square kilometers. Of Holy force. cow! Um, and you want to get more out? Is there any way we oh, can so help? How can we? Yeah, help? I mean, I think that uh, it's all about sort of being able to listen in. We want to build a community around it, um, and we want to sort of get into it. And another thing on top of that is that look, if we have this system that allows you to pick out insights from the forest, we want people to be able to grab that, like ecologists, biologists, and the rest. And we're also going to release an app, hopefully, uh, early next year, that allows anybody to take this and put this on their windowsill, and they can actually get a, an alert when their favorite bird comes into the backyard, oh. or the other sorts of thing happen. Right. Yeah. 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 Once you've got the technology, you can expand this incredibly. I mean, <laughs> you can you can start uh, categorizing city sounds. This is like a ring yeah. doorbell for the forest. That's yeah. a really great idea. I love <laughs> that. Certain sense. So. Um, uh, can we, yeah. What's the website? How can uh, we website, help? What can uh, we do? RFCX.org. But really, just uh, I think that the, just go on the App Store, I, oh, iOS yeah. or Android, and, and download the app. Uh, that'll be the great way for us to stay in contact. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks, Look guys. for Rainforest Connection. Yeah, hey. RFCX. There we are. We got, we're going to get into some really org. cool stuff, I think. This um, combines so many things that this network loves. The fact that you're reusing old technology, keeping mm -hmm. it out of landfills. The fact that you've created something new. The fact that you're helping the environment. And the fact that I like this you are giving people a tool to defend their homes. I love it. Seriously. And, and you know, when they do that, inspiring. they're, they're yeah. inspired to do it anyway. If, they, if they're doing that, they're helping us. They're doing the job right. for us when it comes to climate change. I mean, Did you have help designing this? How, who, who, tell me about your, the team involved. Uh, so the team involved is, uh, is fantastic. We're mostly working on some really uh, cool cloud-based technologies for, uh, for helping to... Um, to you, know, you must have AI people insights. and Yeah, we got, a, we got a good team of AI people, but we realized pretty early on that we couldn't be hiring more data scientists to build more models to pick out new things. So that's why we sort of made a choice that just like having phones in trees to make it so rangers don't have to go out there and find things, we have to build a system that allows us to automate the detection of new species. Yeah, yeah. And so that's really what we're working on. But uh, we're focused on ways that anyone can get involved. Uh, the rainforest will only be saved if we can make the rainforest interesting to the world. And that's what this app's about. That's what the rest of this is all about. So uh, we think that it's going to be that connection between the people in the field who are doing this great work and the people here. But that's not going to happen naturally. It's up to us to, to, to sort of incentivize people to, to care. Uh, and that's what uh, this real-time connection is all about. Very nice. Topher, really great thanks, to guys. meet you. RFCX.org. Hey, thanks a lot, Keep you guys. up the great work. Wow. Hey. This is it's everything we we're interested this in is in us. every respect. This is what we do. I love it. Uh, this you guys talk about everything that we're interested in. So <laughs> you know what I got under here?
Um, I'm hoping don't, that don't it's... ask. <laughs> oh, it's a... <laughs> no, it's my oh, Joby. Oof. I have Joby's everywhere. I love Joby's. Joby, the Gorilla Pod. This is their signature flexible tripod. Everybody, I carry this in my uh, briefcase. This one is designed to hold a camera phone. Right, you put it right in there. The magnetic feet attach. I love it. In 2006, 2006. Joby revolutionized creativity with their first ever flexible tripod. Now with over 10 million sold, they're making them even better. New designs feature their signature ball and socket joint legs, but you also get rubberized grip rings, stainless steel reinforced ball heads. So you don't have to give up your really nice ball head to use a, a, a Joby tripod. 90 degree tilt, perfect for shooting in landscape or portrait mode. And I love these flexible legs. They wrap around objects. I had it when we were on vacation. I always I like to take odd pictures. At first, I wrapped this. I wanted to get a picture of the river going by on the riverboat, so I wrapped it around the railing. But I realized that wasn't as stable as I wanted. So these magnetic feet they held right onto the ship, and I had my my camera phone on the side of the ship as we went through the lock. Uh, it scared Lisa. She said, "No, I would take." The, I said, "No, no, it'll be fine. Not this trust. thing is in That's it's trust. trust. You can mount any kind of device. I mean, of course, I use this for my camera phone, but you can use point-and-shoot cameras, action cameras, 360-degree cameras, mirrorless. Even they've got Joby's for DSLRs. Look at the big boy. You can also mount flashes if you like to use off-camera strobes. They're perfect for that. Video lights. Any device with a quarter twenty standard tripod mount will work. Flexible, stable." and versatile. Grip it, wrap it, stand it. You could probably even put a cell phone in a tree in the rainforest. Yeah, video right here shot with a Joby actually. No kidding. Up in a treetop. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> we didn't it. even, we, ne we didn't set this up. I mean, look, at, there you're up are. there with a GoPro or something on a Joby. Oh, yeah, please crazy. Don't, don't tilt it down. Just 120 no, feet up. Yeah. No, I, I don't do it, like Topher. Yeah. <laughs> it Joby is, uh, is transitioning right now. They're moving to a new production center. So they're going to be able to make even better stuff faster and answer the amazing demand for Joby. So they cannot accept online orders right now. But you can go to joby.com, J-O-B-Y.com. Leave your email with them, and they will update you when product availability resumes. And once they're accepting orders, you can use our offer code TWIT at checkout, and you'll get 15% off your order. If you're a photographer, if you are an action photographer, I'm taking a whole bunch of these my son and I are going on a sailing vacation uh, oh. for Christmas. I'm taking a whole bunch of these. We're going to have ma cameras everywhere. Cameras. He wants to make a massive video. And so I said, okay, deal. I'm bringing the Jobies. J-O-B-Y dot com. Make sure you l leave your email address there. And uh, and then once uh, you can order, you'll be able to get 15% off at checkout. With it's a great tool. Twitter. I know, isn't it? Yeah. Everybody, I you know. I love it. it uses, you can use your phone as a camera. As yeah. A phone's in there anyway. And like, nowadays, these smartphones have 4K. I mean, the new iPhone 8, the videos. I carry two. One for the camera and one for the light. So yeah. I can put the light off access. Oh, you're smart. This is the one. This one has the Bluetooth uh, trigger. Oh, nice. <laughs> See, so you, I know. And it's, what I like is it's right on the tripod, so I never lose it. Put the camera on the tripod. And then I can step back, and then I can say, shoot me. I'm on camera right now. It really is awesome. Selfie well, spot. I can yeah. put a camera in there. <laughs> little, tech, little tech hit. Yeah. Hey, uh, Megan Maroney's back with her digital cleanse, wires, chargers, and dongles. Oh, my. It's time to tidy things up in, uh, in uh, just, oh, let's do it now, right? Okay, and then yeah, we're going to talk to Nick Guy about cheat chargers. Cool. Megan, clean us up. Welcome to week seven of the Twit Digital Cleanse. It's like a juice cleanse, but without the juice. This week, we're going to expurgate all of the physical tech in our lives. I'm talking chargers, dongles, wires, and cords. In other words, we're gonna detox our disc. Let's get started. Some say our dream of a wireless world is right around the corner, but the last two wireless chargers I bought sure did add a lot of wire clutter to my desk. So it was time to rethink my cable management. Here are four of my favorite products. To keep cables from winding into each other to create a giant rat king, get yourself some cable clips. You can get individual clips that attach to the top of your desk or underneath, or you can grab a weighted cable holder to direct your cables from the plug to your laptop. I like the ideal Stanley cable clip holder with four slots. The Riptie Cable Wrap 
is my next favorite product. Although they look like the latest Apple Watch band, these rip ties keep all your cables neat and organized. They have a simple design that's easy to use and to reuse, unlike zip ties, which perform the same function, but are really only good for one use. They come in 12 sizes and 14 colors, plus the rainbow pack, which includes all 10 colors. You can use them to organize cables on your desk or under your desk to avoid them all getting tangled up with one another, or just use them as an Apple Watch band. The 3M Command brand also makes a lot of great products for cable management. I like these simple adhesive clips for wrapping and storing your wires under your desk. They adhere to my desk really well, and when I've had to move them, they don't leave a mark. If you have a lot of wires and you want to keep them from snaking all over the place, try TechFlex. That's this stuff. It feels like those Chinese finger traps, that stuff that they're made of, uh, but it's not. It's used to keep a bundle of cables together. We use it all over the studio. Keeping your dongles and cables and chargers in check on the go is another story. I love the cord tacos from This Is Ground. If you've only got a few, they can be classy, but a little costly. A six pack is $35. For taking all your tech detritus on vacation, try the Gridit products from Cocoon. They come in all different shapes and sizes and manage to hold everything in place in any configuration you choose. You can also avoid turning your purse, man bag, or luggage into an elaborate cable and dongle salad by using something simple like small Ziploc bags or mesh bags with zippers. I like the ones from Vaults. that's V-A-U-L-T-Z. Gold stars this week go to Burke and John, the masters of desk detox, for giving me product advice for all of the products in this week's digital cleanse. And also to iBookery on Twitter, who suggests a USB charging station and to keep individual power bricks in a drawer. I recommend one from Anchor. Tune in to the new screensavers for week eight of the digital cleanse, where we will manage all of our digital subscriptions. That means the ones clogging up our inboxes and the ones we don't even realize that we're still paying for. I'm Megan Maroney, and you can find me on iOS Today on Tuesdays and Tech News Weekly on Thursdays. And I'm also on Know How, Triangulation, and right here on the new screensavers. Until then, send me your tips. I'm on Twitter at Megan Maroney or use the hashtag digital cleanse. She's so clean. I know. I, know. I, I, I see her desk and I see my desk and I just. Is her desk tiny? Because I want tiny. you. You can give us this. But she the messes lowdown. up the desk next to her. So that's. <laughs> uh, see, I knew. Uh, I knew. I knew there was a secret. Thank you, Megan. Uh, what episode is that? Five, six, seven. seven. So we got three more digital cleanses to go. On the line with us right now, Nick Guy. He's a senior staff writer uh, at thewirecutter.com. He's in charge of Apple products and accessories. Hi, Nick. Hey there, how you doing? We love the wire cutter, now a New York Times property, and I love That's the new right. site design, by the way. I just saw that. Thank you. Looks yeah, our really team worked really hard on that. I think it's uh, it's a great look for us. I, I send people to the wire cutter always because the original uh, idea way back when, when Brian started it, was to pick one right oh. you don't need all oh, that's not these hard at all yeah right. <laughs> you don't need 20 speakers you want the best speaker and right. it's the kind of things you would recommend to your friends or family what would you yeah you wouldn't say to your friends well there's 13 different phones you can choose from you would say here's exactly. the one you should get and that's kind exactly. of the idea of the wire cutter and i like it but you guys do and this is the other thing i really admire and i think we need rigorously test and and, and this is something that's kind of gone by the wayside i remember in the old days, Ziff Davis Labs and PC Magazine, yep. they would test 800 printers, and nobody does that anymore. So well, I'm glad yeah, the wire cutter is so still doing hard it. for someone to do it because I mean, there's we nothing can't do in it. it. Yeah, you can't do it. Most videos on YouTube are this is an unboxing. I've had it yeah. for 15 minutes, yep. and I, yeah, Hi. you should buy it. Hi guys, <laughs> what's <laughs> happening, guys? So uh, tell us, this is this is so funny. Wireless chargers, they've been around. This is this hmm. is my Anchor hmm. Qi charger from probably 2000. 10. Early days. It's going back a ways, yeah. Yeah, uh, because we've had wireless charging on phones for a long time. But Right, she is nothing new. Yeah, that's kind of my motto. She is nothing new. <laughs> now, I think you had two of those at one point, right? I've had, I've had big pads, little pads, all kinds of pads. But now that the iPhone 8 supports wireless charging, it's a new day. It's the renaissance of wireless charging, even as companies like Google abandon it with, mm -hmm. metal, with metal phones. So what did you guys do? You tested wireless chargers? Yeah, we tested five uh, Qi chargers. Uh, we limited our search to chargers that are certified by the Wireless Power Consortium, which is the group behind the Qi charging standard. We did that to verify that they will be safe 
for charging your phone. Uh, something that's not WPC certified may still be fine. For example, Anchor has a very popular Qi charger that's not certified. Uh, that doesn't mean it's not safe, but we know that everything that is certified is safe. So that's sort of the cutoff we use there. Wait a minute. How, wh wh when you say not safe, what could go wrong? <laughs> well, you know, it, there's there's a lot that could go wrong. Uh, overheating is one example. Yeah. Uh, if you've ever used a Qi charger, you might notice it gets warm because yeah. that's actually a an inefficiency in the charging. Uh, you know, the heat energy turns into heat and instead of going to your battery comes right. out as heat. Right. Uh, so that's possible. Thankfully, in none of our testing, we saw any issues like that. Again, we did stick to certified chargers, but it's one of those things I think you better, you're better you're better off safe than sorry. Uh, one of the things that, that turned me off, because I, I did have an early wireless charging capable phone, was the fact that you kind of had to be precise where you placed the phone. I, I, I remember the, the, the time I stopped using it was the night I accidentally put my phone about two millimeters too much to the right, yeah. and it didn't charge. I woke up, I had to leave, and I had 15% charge. It's so funny left. to sure. hear the new Apple iPhone owners complaining about this. <laughs> like they just discovered this. You know what can happen? Look at this is the early an early anchor charger, and exactly they have a they have a target. Right there. You got to yeah. put the inducted inductive coil in the back of the phone on that dot. Now, uh, I know a lot of these have like magnets to help you position it, right? Right, right. yeah. So but so our, our pick is actually this Samsung charger. Uh, it's the EPPG920i. Uh, if you just search for Samsung Qi, it'll pop right up. Um, but it's actually pretty good in terms of giving you a little bit of flexibility. You know, you can see I can move it around a little bit side to side and it'll still. Oh, that's not bad. How do they do that? Yeah. With multiple coils? Is that the trick? I think it's a combination of multiple coils and the size of the coils, uh, yeah. both in the phone and in the um, and in the pad. And one of the nice things about this one is there's actually a, a blue light that glows to let you know that there's okay. you know it's making connections. I so look if you for look that. over, yeah. Yeah. yeah, your phone will buzz or or indicate somehow. But I also like seeing that. Well, because I've had it where I've yeah. put it on the pad and it buzzed, but then it, it kind of moved a little bit, yeah. and, then it, and I yeah. got no notification. A, a nice blue warns. light, perfect. Yeah. Apple I mean, actually warns in their in one of their knowledge base articles that it, you know the vibrations could uh, could shake it off center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things we looked for, and one of the nice things about the Samsung is there's a rubber ring here that does a good job of holding Hold it in it. place, so it's not going to move around too much. What's different? What, I mean, we've had wireless chargers. My toothbrush charges wirelessly. It's it, it, my understanding is it's a magnetic field from the base that uh, causes. Yeah. Uh, an inductance coil to generate electricity yeah, in two the coils. two coils. How is Qi, that's how Qi works. What yeah. makes Qi, Qi? Qi is just a standard. Uh, there is one other standard out there that doesn't have Power much traction mask. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have much traction. Um, so Qi is just a standard and thankfully Apple chose to use the Qi standard instead yeah. of its own, which it very easily could have. And it looks like the air power charger they have coming next year is based on Qi, but it's not... Qi Plus. It's Because yeah, Apple can't do anything just like on a standard. They got to... Oh, Apple. So I like, I like, I got with my Note 8, I got a charger as well. And this is very, this is the more expensive Samsung charger. Very similar, it's a pad. But what I really like on a charger, it, and this does that, you can have it as a pad, mm -hmm. but I like mm -hmm. it when it's an easel. Because what, and you see, that, that'll have the light that goes on. But with an easel... A couple of things happen for me. First of all, it, it, it helps with positioning it, placement. And then also, I, my phone is upright. I can look at right. it. And with these always on screens, uh, Apple doesn't have it yet in the 8, but it will in the iPhone 10. That's a nice thing to have. It becomes kind of a, a clock for you. Uh, yeah, this is another charger cool you guys did not review, but I really like it. This is from, uh, this is the Tilt charger. And this also, this is about $30, has an easel. And because it has three coils, it's really hard not to get it right. And if it's on the easel, it's going to charge. It even charges upside down, which is awesome. And you see the light here down there going green saying I'm, I'm charging. So uh, what else did you like? So the Samsung, you liked, a, uh, what is it, Spigen? Spigen? Spie uh, yeah, I, th I, think, I think it's pronounced Spigen. I asked them once and they said it was Spigen. I always used to say Spigen though. Um, so their charger is nice. It's a little bit smaller than the Samsung. Um, it, it worked just as well. The only problem compared to the Samsung is it doesn't come with a, a wall adapter. So it's just the micro oh, USB okay. cable. You can use any USB adapter, the one that comes with your iPad, your iPhone. Uh, but one of the big things we were testing for was speed. Um, 
So we actually we uh, we charged each phone from zero to 100 percent at least twice, if not three or four times. We used an iPhone 8, an iPhone 8 Plus, and a uh, Galaxy S8. And we recorded where the charge level was after each hour and then the total charge time. Uh, and we found actually that with the iPhone 8, the Spigen was about half an hour faster. Oh, interesting. But, be but because it costs more, especially when you have to fit factor in the, uh, the charger, uh, we decided that the Samsung is a better bet. So that's interesting. Yeah, this uh, this uh, Note charger from Samsung says fast charge. What is, I understand what fast charge means when you're plugging it in. What does that mean in wireless terms? Wireless can what have more power? Sure. sure. So there are different Qi standards. Actually, the current Qi standard supports up to up to 15 watt charging, but nothing that we found actually uses no no phones can receive 15 watt yet. There are a few 15 watt uh, base stations out there, but no phones can actually take 15. Uh, the S8 can take up to nine watts, um, but even with uh, Samsung's fast charger, we found it was only about eight minutes faster on average. Uh, so, and the iPhone can only take five watt right now. Oh, interesting! Uh, it doesn't support now, fast fast charging. It does not. Now, there's sort of an asterisk to that, though. Uh, there's going to be a software update to the iPhone uh, coming later this year that will enable 7.5 watt charging. One thing but, people complain about with cheat charging is that it's inefficient. Super inefficient, yeah. right? Yeah. Wireless charging yeah. by its nature is going to be way more inefficient. Than Should I be concerned? I mean, does that mean it costs me more to charge my phone? Well, yes. Probably, you but, know, yeah. probably talking pennies. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a few years ago there was a, a statistic that said it costs like $7 a year to charge your phone. So I wouldn't think it's too much more, but, you know, it, it, yeah, the, you are losing okay. some of that energy. It's not going straight to your battery. I, I like wireless because when I go to bed, I don't like to find the cable and find the socket and get it in just right. I love the idea of just putting it right there. So I have one of these uh, tilt chargers, uh, the VU it is, uh, uh, right by my bedside. And I just, I, I've never lost, I've never not charged. I just, I feel like having a good Qi charger that's easy to get on, on the spot is a better way to charge. Do you use wireless charging? I, You're smiling I at don't, me as if you I don't. I don't anymore. Because you knocked it off. I kind of knocked it off. And it's, you know, for me, I kind of like having that cable. It's it's a good thing for me because what will I do sometimes? I'll, I'll be lying down and I'll, I'll, I'll want it charging and either I have it plugged into a cable or I'm right. holding the base. Which, by the way, I want to see if that happens to iPhone users. When Android phones first started getting wireless charging, I would see people in a public area, having brought out their wireless charger, <laughs> plugged in a USB thing to their wireless charger, and then put that, their phone on. That's and dopey. It's dopey, but you know what? People <laughs> like it because they want to show people, I'm I've got wireless charging. Well, that is another thing to look for. I don't know if you guys mentioned it, but some wireless chargers, as you did mention, have uh, non-standard cables that you plug mm -hmm. into the wall and plug into the charger. But that's some, right. many, like this Samsung, this is a Type-C charger. So if you did want cable charging, you could un you could disconnect the cable from the wireless yeah, and charger and plug it into watts, your phone. So that's perfect. yeah, and so I, I would look for a charger that has a standard, yeah. you know, either Lightning or Type C cable for your charging needs. The uh, the View does not. It is a proprietary power cable, so you can't do it with that one. So Apple recommends the Mophie. Did you guys test that one? Yeah, they actually recommend a model from Mophie and another from Belkin. Um, so what we found oh. is these actually charged at just about the same rates as all the rest. Um, the Mophie got the uh, iPhone 8 up to a full ch charge in about 217 minutes compared to 225 with the Samsung. And the, uh, the Belkin is uh, right around that range too, um, about 218 minutes. Now what's interesting is when that 7.5 watt software update does come out uh, later this year, Belkin and Mofi have both told me that only their chargers will support that faster rate. So even if you buy, say, a 10 watt charger from some from uh, Anchor, only the Belkin and Mofi chargers will support faster charging on the iPhone. That's is that just because those have larger coils? Because I mean, the software update's not going to affect the base. I can't say exactly why it is. It might be some of you know. Apple is working with these two companies specifically, um, so it may be just you know part of the tech they have in there. Apple adding its own you know Apple layer to it all, um, and that you know we'll see at that time what that extra wattage does mean in terms of actual charging power. But these are both sixty dollars compared to about twenty five dollars for our pick. Right. So you either get one expensive one or get multiples 
less expensive ones. Yeah, I like having nice. one at work. I like yeah. having one at, mm -hmm. by my bed. I like having one in my desk. I put home. one in my pocket connected to I my have battery. One, I have so one I right just, now. I'm wearing. Oh. So, <laughs> no. So, but I, that's true. The price isn't important if you yeah. want to have wireless uh, everywhere. Yeah. Um, all right. So, I, I'm surprised you guys like those puck chargers. Those seem to me more likely to be off axis to fall yeah. off. I'm a big fan of be, the easel chargers. I really we like are going to be easel. testing those for an update yeah. to the article. Yeah. Uh, so we always update our guides as new products come out and as we have a chance to test even more. Uh, it took me about a hundred man hours of charging yeah, to actually get through for this first round. Yeah. So uh, and if you've ever done charging testing, it's drain charge, drain it charge. Takes a while. Takes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. definitely be continuing to update the guide. Right. Uh, and finding the best picks in a variety of styles. Well, if you're one of those newbies, those Apple newbies coming to wireless charging for the first time, just something to keep in mind. Yes, they do slip off. Yes, if you do. get vibration alerts, it could shake it right off of there. But I've found I have yet to have a problem with any of the easel stands. I really feel like that's the way to go. Unless you want to get this super fast Samsung thing. 7.5 watts. Go to, go to thewirecutter.com and read Nick's review. He spent a lot of time doing it. Nick guy. And the ins and outs are really important. There's a lot more information than just which ones to get. There's a lot to say about, the, as you could tell, about the future of wireless charging. Nick, come back when you do this second round. We'd love to know more yeah, about this. Yeah, I'd love to. Absolutely. Thank you. Nick Guy, so senior staff writer for Apple Products and Accessories. From, there aren't many of those, are there? Not yet. From no. the <laughs> for the wirecutter.com. All right, you ready for a call for help? I think so. Let's All do right. it. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, on the line right now from Waco, Texas, Martin. Hello, Martin. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. I, I, I'm guessing, because a Synology NAS has appeared on the table... <laughs> it's magic. That, ...that you're going right up Robert's alley with this one. What is your question, Martin? Yeah, I figured it would be. Um, so, like most households, we have a bunch of, uh, you know, devices on there, um, and I've been looking into VPN services. Mm -hmm. And instead of installing a VPN service on every single device... I'd like to see if I can uh, actually install a VPN on my Synology and then route all my traffic from my network uh, through the Synology NAS. Oh, that's a good idea. A lot of routers have built-in open VPN Oh, support, yes, they right? do. That's fairly common. Does but, it Synology? Uh, yes, it does. And, but this, here's the interesting thing, because he actually wants to do it reverse from how it's actually been designed to do. Most Synology products, and actually most NAS boxes that have additional functionality, have the ability to act as a VPN server. Server, right. right. There's like open VPN running. Correct. Yeah. So I can use my mobile device or my laptop to connect back into my home network securely. Ah, he what? wants to do it differently. Okay. So he wants his box to connect to an open VPN or a VPN service and then route all his traffic through that way. Oh. It's like acting like a Tor server, basically. You know, VPN server. Except in, instead of having every device running a VPN client, you have one box running the VPN client, and then all the other devices on the network route their traffic through that box. Now, you understand that if you route all of your internal network traffic in your home through a VPN server that's somewhere out there, I understand why you might want to do that to protect your privacy right. from your internet service provider. Uh, you're going to slow things down. Oh, yes. A lot, oh, right? Yes, a lot. Like how much? Uh, it, it depends on which VPN provider you're using. Uh, a lot of free ones, they'll give you, you know, maybe a megabit per second. Uh, some of the ones that... Oh. Not enough to watch Netflix. Yeah, no, definitely not. Okay. But I've also done some enterprise-ready VPN services that can give me almost line speed. I mean, it's, it's essentially, if, as long as I've got an engine that's doing the encryption for me, uh, it's one or two extra hops, but other than that, it's, it's almost full bandwidth. So that's important and, and i've kind of only recently like this morning yeah. understood this thanks to you that there are a number of things that make vpns slow one is the processor yes. in the vpn server because i was i was using my tiny hardware firewall this is a vpn server i keep in my in my pocket for as we travel but this has a very limited DSP processor in here, so it can't get too fast. The good news about Synology, they put pretty good processors oh, yes. in there, right? There's Those a are... dedicated encryption processor in there. Oh, is there? Yeah, so okay. it's a piece of hardware. In so that'll speed things up. Not all of the Synology boxes, but I think you had it, was it a 216 or a 213 that you have? 213, yes. You have a 213. Yep. I think that's actually 
right at the low edge of having its own encryption processor. You might want to check the specs. So on that's that. important for overall VPN Very speed. Very important. Sure. And then, of course, you're only as fast as the server you connect to. Precisely. So your bandwidth isn't really the issue here in most cases. Your bandwidth is going to limit you, but what's going to limit you more in most cases is how fast their bandwidth is or how much bandwidth they allow you to use. Precisely. Who are you going to use as a VPN uh, host? Uh, I've looked at a couple different ones. Um, there's like open VPN and stuff like that that I've seen work on a Synology NAS. No, that's, um, but that's your, that's, see, this is different, right? Mm -hmm, that would different. be if you're the VPN server. But what you, it sounds like what you want to do is have all your traffic go through VPN to the outside world, right? I do. Yeah. yeah. So that means you're going to connect to a VPN server in the outside world. So you're going to go to somebody like Hotspot VPN or Tunnel, Tunnel Bear, Bear or there's there's thousands of these, right? Right. Do you have any experience with who's fast, who's good? You know, the, unfortunately, it really depends on where you live and what your provider is because that will all determine who's got the best path to you. So you, you really do have to try out the different providers that fall in your price range. And again, you can pay for a lot of bandwidth or you can get something a little less expensive if you're willing to put up with a little bit of delay. Now, one of the nice things about using a setup like this is you can also decide which traffic uses a VPN and which traffic oh, doesn't. Oh, I like that. So, for so example, yeah. you're streaming media, you don't want to use a VPN. Precisely. But if okay. you want privacy, why are you using a VPN? Is it to hide from your ISP? Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of the privacy, privacy concerns that are out there uh, yeah. now. So I've, just, I've been looking into... VPNs just in general. Yeah. Yeah. So. Say no more. Say no, privacy is good. We like privacy. Okay. Now, thankfully, your box, like this one, you've got the uh, 213. I, this is the 713 Plus, so it's a, a tiny bit faster, but the same format. It's got yeah. everything you need inside of it to do this without even loading additional software that you have to pay for. Uh, if you go ahead and go to my, uh, my computer, the first thing we want to do, it's a two-step process. You're going to want to go into uh, your control panel, and uh, oh wait, wait, there we go. And go into the network. Now, once you're in the network, you're going to see this little tab here called Network Interface. Now you can create a new VPN profile. So this is this is built in. This is base. You have a couple of different options: PPTP, OpenVPN, or L2TP IPsec. Now, here's the difference: PPTP, don't use it. It's fast. It's the fastest of the three. However it's been deprecated. So if you are concerned about privacy, PPTP isn't going to cut it. Really, the only people who use PPTP, you know what yeah, I'm talking PPTP, about, yeah. are, are smartphones, because a lot of them won't support these other protocols. Precisely, yeah. precisely. But I mean, uh, I can break PPTP, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> if he can break PPTP, well, you yeah. know. If I've got limited hardware and I can break it, <laughs> anyone yeah, can break it. Yeah, it. it's been cracked. It's been cracked. Yeah. Uh, L2TP is nice, but the problem is that VPN doesn't actually encrypt. It's just a connection method. So you need to run IPsec on top of it, which adds complexity. Don't do that. The easiest way to do it is with OpenVPN. Uh, OpenVPN is open source, and it will most likely be supported by any VPN service that you, that you use. Uh, once you get in here, you just have to know uh, what do you want to call it. You have to know the server address, your username and password, the port that you want to use to access that VPN, and then the certificate. And the certificate is important because that's what it's actually going to be using to encrypt your traffic. Uh, once you have this done, what it, what, will, what it will do is it actually creates a client. So your NAS is now connected to that uh, VPN service. However, that doesn't mean that your NAS is now routing traffic from your network. To do that, you have to install a little something else called the proxy server. Actually, let's look at uh, my installed ones. Uh, there it is. So the proxy server, this is a free install. This is straight from Synology. This will mm -hmm. allow you to turn on sort of a, it's a gateway. It, it, it says, let me give you the ability to route traffic through me. And because your box is already connected to a VPN server, if traffic is being routed through the NAS, it means it's being routed through the VPN. And again, this is pretty simple. All you have to do is activate the cache. Let me uh, go ahead and jump in. So the in. NAS isn't going to slow it down. It's got enough horsepower. And it's oh, yeah. not doing any encryption itself. Or it is. No, it has to, right? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It does encrypt at its end. Okay. So uh, when I get into the proxy server, all I have to do is enable the caching. There we go. And then under proxy, oh, there we go proxy de uh, deployment, I'm going to enable web proxy automatic discovery. Now, every client, so a, a laptop, a desktop, or a mobile device that I want to use that VPN 
just goes to the web address of my NAS box, and my NAS box will automatically route it through the VPN. What I like about this setup is if you don't route it through the NAS box, it will go through the regular route to the router, and then it's not encrypted, but it's much faster. So you get to choose oh. what goes where. It's a nice setup, and uh, it's, it's a, it, we call it a split setup. Don't do this. Uh, I've seen some, some tutorials on YouTube where they basically just put the NAS into the DMZ of your router. That's a horrible thing to do because it now means you've opened your storage device to the internet. Uh, don't do that, please, mm -hmm. because then I'll be reading your files. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you yeah. very much. Does that make sense? I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're going to do a full tutorial on this, both, both ways. So using the NAS box as a server and using it as a client on know-how in about three weeks. So if you, if you want a step-by-step, -step, drop it in three weeks and I'll have the instructions for you. And VPNs have gotten uh, faster. I'm just looking at the 2017 uh, VPN reviews on PC Magazine. So this is fairly up-to-date. In fact, it just came out uh, four days ago. And they, they have some numbers about the speed. Mm -hmm. They have some recommendations. So it is, that's the good news. They, they like NordVPN, for instance. It, it, that's the good news is there are VPN services you, want you can competition. use that yeah. will give you enough speed that you probably can do many of the things that you would do on your network without encryption. So that's good news. Yeah. And again, that encryption processor makes all the difference because otherwise your packets, your data gets delayed as it gets encrypted and then pushed over the VPN. This way, it's almost real time. Have fun oh. and stay safe and private. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for the call, Martin in Waco, Texas. Yeah, I feel like, um, is it Waco or Waco? Waco. Waco. Sorry about that. I feel like uh, this all started because the FCC yeah. overturned the, the nascent rule that hadn't really been in effect for very long that said ISPs can't sell your information to third parties. And people got very nervous because your internet service provider sees everything that you do. But remember, many of the things you do are already encrypted. For instance, all your Google searches are encrypted. They can't see those. A anything you do on Gmail and most email servers, they can't see that. So you may w really want to think about, well, how much of what I do is encrypted already? Your ISP, of course, can always see where you're going, but they mm -hmm. can't in many cases see what you're doing. The most important one to me is uh, Google searches. I don't want anybody to know what I'm searching for. That's the kind of thing people can make all sorts of assumptions about based on what you search for. Oh, he must have cancer. He's looking for cancer treatments, things like that, that could perhaps really impact you. But again, Google does encrypt all searches. Yes, so, it does. So I think uh, that's an improvement. Uh, Facebook encrypts everything. And that's why I think the split setup is important right. because if, if you start poking around and looking at your actual usage, you can very quickly figure out what data is really sensitive and you care about and which data is, well, I don't care at all. Like Netflix, yeah, who cares if they know I'm connected to Netflix and for how long? That's, yeah. that's not information I want to protect. However, when I actually start reaching out to servers that I don't want people to know exist, then yeah, that's probably going to be going through a VPN or a tour. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Thanks. Great call, Martin. Who's on the show uh, next week? Megan. Megan Maroney, our digital cleanser, will be here. If you have a question for me or Megan, here's how you can ask. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. We're going to do the mailbag in just a second. You know, I, I had a jelly phone lying around here somewhere, mm. and it just, it's, the thing is so little, it seems to have, oh, this. wait a minute, oh. here it is, oh. magnetically attached. So cute. <laughs> the Joby tripod is actually bigger than that phone. It actually wouldn't work in uh, <laughs> landscape mode. The jelly phone is so small. Here is our review. Jason Howell, what do you think? Smartphone technology has come a long way in the last 10 years or so, and the general trend over that time has been bigger, 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 to the point where phones and tablets converged, resulting in that word I hate so much, phablets. Well, I have a phone that is, let's say, the anti-phablet. It takes the size dynamic to the other extreme, and it's called the Jelly 4G phone. It's by Unihertz, a company that held a successful Kickstarter campaign to bring to market what it calls the smallest 4G smartphone, as you can see here. It's running Android 7.0 Nougat, and as you can tell, it is tiny at 3.6 inches tall and 1.7 inches wide with a 2.45 inch LCD display, touchscreen display. It has a two megapixel front-facing camera that's a 
about as good as you would expect. And an 8 megapixel rear facing camera that honestly isn't that much better. Inside is powered by a 1.1 gigahertz quad core MediaTek processor with one gig of RAM on this device and eight gigs of storage. Uh, though you can get the pro version of the Jelly with two gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of onboard storage. Under the flap here, you'll find the 950 milliamp hour removable battery, as well as dual SIM slots. And there's a micro SD card slot here for expanded storage. Great for storing your media on. Now, first and foremost, this is a phone. And aside from feeling slightly ridiculous holding this up to my ear in that Zoolander sort of way, calls were clear on both ends. And I suppose it works great for that. On the other hand, this tiny Android device runs complete, which means you can install any Android app or game on the hardware as long as it supports it. And as you might expect, with the lower end specs under the hood, you won't find the best performance here on all things. Things get slow, sometimes laggy in everyday use. Even with the main home screen, things slow down from time to time. And don't get me started on what it's like typing on this device. It's next to impossible to hit those keyboard targets without consistently misspelling things. And uh, if you think voice entry is going to save the day there, uh, you would be wrong. That would be a great way around this, but it's a big shortcoming because you can't do that on this. Uh, but I'd recommend looking at the Jelly through a different lens. Instead of using this like a phone, perhaps the Jelly works best as a glorified media player. Load Google Play Music, Pocket Cast, Audible, Spotify, whatever you use on there. And you can even purchase the Jelly armband for $12.99. And you have a media device that's perfect for the gym. It does everything your phablet does without all that bulk. Now, I bought this phone here through the Kickstarter when that was running as an early backer for $79. But Unihertz now sells the Jelly Pro, which is the upgraded model, uh, to anyone through its site at unihertz.com for $124.99. Then even you can put that tiny pocket you never use on your pants to actual use. I'm Jason Howell, and you can find me hosting all about Android and my newest show with Megan Maroney, Tech News Weekly, here on twit.tv. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm Tech. My phone looks so big compared to your phone. It just, <laughs> it doesn't seem right. You know, Leo, it's like not about size, up, it's I'm about beat how up I on use you. it. That's terrible. Look at that. But I mean, I, I've got, I've got Android on this. and I mean, Do you use it? I do not. No, I, I uh, talk about fat finger. I mean, basically my thumb is the size of the screen. Price so. is right. It's low enough that maybe you keep that in your glove compartment for emergencies. This is an emergency phone. That's how yeah. I see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's but not bad. It's, it's. I mean, you could give this to your kid. And you wouldn't want to spend a lot of time. See, that's the thing. Why put Android on it? Why not just make it a dumb phone? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, if you want a low price emergency phone, I think a feature phone is a better way to yeah. go. But you know, some people get used to Android and they really want this. Although yeah. I, I have very little hope that this is actually going to be updated with any regularity. The it's Jelly Phone is that a Jelly Pro? It's a Jelly Roll. <laughs> You know, we have here in the uh, Bay Area, Northern California, we've been suffering through wildfires yes. all week, and our thoughts and prayers and love go out to all of our friends and family who are suffering. Man, this has been a rotten year so far with hurricanes in the southeast and uh, and, the, and this fire in poor San Juan, Puerto Rico. We have uh, a system, it's interesting, I had never really been in an emergency situation, so I didn't know, but we have this uh, text messaging system we've been using called Nixley. Is that Nixle. national? Nixel. N-I-X-L-E. Anyway, they tell everybody, text your zip code to the, f the special short code number. I won't give it out. I don't want to overburden them. Uh, and then we'll send you uh, notifications. And, of course, the thing people are, there it is. Well, we just gave out the number. The 888-777. Uh, and, and then you start receiving uh, warnings based on your zip code. So they're appropriate to your location. And of course, we're all worried because the fires have been spreading over the last few days. There's a lot of smoke. People are very concerned. Uh, but this system has worked pretty well. The sad thing is that uh, in Napa County, they used a text messaging system to warn people in Napa County about the fires. Most of those people got out. Here in Sonoma County, yeah. they elected not to use the emergency text message warning system. And that's where all the fatalities occurred. It took now, people by surprise. I don't know that's because that's only because they didn't use the warning system. And the fires were very fast moving here in Sonoma County. And it may just have been the circumstances involved. But it's interesting to note that these technologies are out there now. What's not out there anymore, when I was growing up, we had air raid sirens. We still have them in San Francisco. Yeah, and every yeah. once in a while they'll every Tuesday. test them. Yeah. 
What would, if there were an emergency in San Francisco and they went off, would people know what to do? Well, that's the problem. They go off every Tuesday, so I think people would just assume it's a test. But what if they went off as it happened here in midnight Monday? Then people would I think you'd at out. least sit up and say, why is that going off? What we really need to do is, I think we need both systems. We need to keep those old-fashioned analog systems alive, and we need to tell people, if you hear the whistle, it means something. Of course, in Hawaii, they have tsunami w warnings, and they take those very seriously, Japan too. But I think here in Northern California, nobody really knew that we were I, I know so risk. many people who have turned off that service on their phone because they use it too often. Right. And, you know, it only takes one or two false alarms before you say, I, you know, I don't want this going off at four in the morning. If you're going to tell me, oh, there might be rain tomorrow, well, that's not an No, that's not good. I, at least on uh, the uh, uh, iPhone, you have settings. And you can say, I yeah. want to have the most extreme warnings. The, the, the ones that warn about threatened uh, property and life, those are the Threat ones. Threat to life warnings. Yes. Give me those. Those I want. And of course, you can't turn off presidential warnings. There's a higher level that cannot be turned off in all of our phones. If you if you turn that can on, be triggered by the president. Turn on the developer options in Android. You can turn off presidential alarms. I think I probably want to leave those. On. <laughs> Even if he's just tweeting, I yeah. want to know. I really, I really do want to know. Anyway, do do pay attention to that and yeah. uh, and you know turn if you have a medical ID in your phone and almost all modern phones do, use that. Fill it out, blood type prescription medication all in there allergies put that in there first responders uh, very often at the very least what they want to know is next of kin so they can make a phone call so if you put that on there they know how to get to that page on the all android and iPhones and first responders will use that if you've got that on you you're unconscious you can't tell them uh, they will look here it's like a medical or bracelet we're, we're a digital world that's yeah. where your information yeah. needs to be yeah it lives here all right ladies and gentlemen it's time for the mailbag Woo! colleen giving us our mailbag today and father robert just for you <laughs> <laughs> something we all need to keep with us at all times i actually have two of those in my car from yeah. twit the old ones you the, took our fire the certified ones <laughs> Burke was going to throw them out. You took a lot of stuff out of Twit. Oh, maybe. I have pictures of you with armfuls of stuff. We were asking this morning, whatever happened to that uh, <laughs> steampunk <laughs> laptop I spent $5,000? That was left behind. I took that as we were turning <laughs> off the lights at the studio. I'm glad you did. That would be a shame to lose it. I'm glad it went to you. All I ask is when you go to Rome, and by the way, we know Father Robert, he's announced it, and it's official. Yes. We'll be going to Rome. Not tomorrow. No. September 2018. So much lead time. So we get, we're just giving you lead time. He has been called back to Rome, which is actually kind of cool. It's cool. And, and it's you know like what? you're going to be working at the Vatican. They too. gave me one year. They told me one year here, and they ended up giving me six. So I'm, You've been I here six years? six years? We've got to start paying this guy. I had no <laughs> idea. That's ridiculous. Uh, anyway, when you go back to Rome, do me a favor. Bring the steampunk laptop, and if you could just get his, the Holy Father to use it once... And, and just Instagram it or tweet it. I think that'd be so cool. He comes over to our place with regularity. Comes so over to our place with regularity. We've got a campus. Father yeah. Robert, you, I mean, uh, Holy Father, look, here's a, here's a laptop made in the 16th century. <laughs> a Victorian laptop. A Victorian? He'd love that. Pick an email. Anyway. He's all about style. Is he? There we go. No. <laughs> I didn't think so. He wears the plainest clothes. He's quite ever. a humble oh, fellow. Oh, yes. You know, I, I learned this, uh, kind of a weird place to learn this on HBO's The Young Pope, <laughs> but you confirmed it that when you are, when you ascend to the papacy, you then go to this special warehouse mm -hmm. where they have every kind of raiment, every kind of decoration, and you get to kind of choose what you're going to wear. And then you come out onto the balcony over, overlooking St. Peter's, and normally we can tell what kind of papacy, papacy it's going to be by how they dress. Some of them choose the most elaborate jewel-encrusted raiment, and some like uh, Pope Francis came out, and it, it was nothing. It was just a, a white simple vestment. cassock, yep. a white cassock, and and then you know this is going to be a, a, a humble papacy. Mm -hmm. I think that's fascinating. Yeah. I love. We're going to come see you in Rome. Oh and, yeah, when you by the time you come, I should have the special keys to all the. <laughs> <laughs> the weird places. All right, you have email number one, so why I don't do. you kick things off? All right, <clears throat> this comes from James, who says, Hi, we're making college plans for my 16-year-old son who wants to get into creative oh, games neat. as a career. Great. We live in San Diego and prefers he stays in California, but not totally against the other states. What kind of college degree and or class concentration would you recommend for him that will take him far into the future and allows him to pursue his programming dreams? As parents, we are thinking you should get a computer science, engineering, and or math degree. Do you agree? Also, do you have any college recommendations? <laughs> 
Great right. question, and I think you have some answers, because you actually work at a high school, don't you? I do, I do, and I've worked with universities. Um, Hmm. See, here's here's the interesting thing. I'm, we're going to have different points of view. We are going to have very different. So let me hear what Father Robert says. Um, I am I'm tied to a religious order that runs universities and high schools, and one of the bits of advice that I've been giving to people is, you don't necessarily have to go to university. That there's so there's so much pressure that if you don't go to a university, you have failed. However, if they know what their son wants to do, then then taking a computer science math degree may not be what he wants. If he, if he knows he wants to be in gaming, then there are plenty of training schools, vocational schools. And in this tech industry, it's not about the letters you have after your name, it's about what you can do. Yeah. You know, do what knowledge do you have? That now, really is still true today. You would have thought, you know, I mean, people like Bill Gates dropped out of college. You would have thought though, as time went by, that it would become more professional and you would expect be expected to have those degrees. I know if you want to get a job at Google, yeah. it would help to have not only a, a BS, but maybe even a PhD in computer yeah. science, right? Right, exactly, and so that's the caveat. If you think your son wants to do this, but you're not sure, but maybe you do have the inkling that he at least wants to be in the computer science field, then definitely computer science, math would be great, because then it also opens up the possibility of getting into security, and security is a very hot field. Um, and there are, if you wanted to stay in California, the, the schools that you'd want to choose would be Stanford, uh, Santa Clara, they've got a great CS uh, department. Um, I mean, probably Cal Poly. Cal Poly is actually also pretty good. Uh, there USC are some schools, and I don't remember where they are, with computer gaming majors. Yes. I don't think I would recommend that. I, I don't think you want to over-specialize yeah. for undergraduate. That's yeah. a really good way to make sure that your child feels like they're trapped. It's like, well, I, I majored in gaming, so now I have to do gaming. Maybe it's your child starts studying computer science you and really realizes, I want to do machine when learning. When you're 16, you don't know what you, you don't. want to do. You don't. And uh, I mean, I went to college, I went at 16, I started young, and I studied Chinese, and I was just talking to Lisa this morning, if I had continued in Chinese, I'd either be an academic or working for the State Department. I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Right. But fortunately, I found the campus radio station and found a completely different vocation. And so you just don't know when you're that young. The th I, actually, we are closer to agreement, but I might even be more radical than you. Uh, first of all, because he's 16, now's the time to take those math classes. Oh, yes. The math classes he takes in high school will probably give him a sufficient foundation to do almost all computer programming. Uh, statistics, trigonometry, um, algebra 2, calculus, all of those you take in high school, I don't think you necessarily need a higher level math. See if he likes math, mm -hmm. do it now. Certainly prepare now. I also, I'm, I'm a little nervous about saying take a computer science degree in college because I think the people who add the most value in game shops or anywhere are people who yes. have a broader range of interests and knowledge. A li I hate to say it, a liberal arts degree. Some of the most respected people in the Silicon Valley who work in security, programming, whatever, go across the fields, are those who took liberal arts degrees and then started specializing. What is it Steve Jobs always said? He said, Apple is at the intersection of technology yep. and the humanities. And it was because of his interest in the humanities and his understanding of society and of history and of culture that he could make technology human scale. So I'm not sure you want to I agree with you. I don't think you want to specialize so much. I don't know if you want to go to college. I think that's a decision you can, I think, plan for college. Right. You're at an age now where you start looking around. But don't necessarily say, I'm, I know what I want to do and I'm going to do this. You may want to try some other things. Yeah. The good news is a lot of the education you might get at a Stanford, you can get right now. Stanford, for instance, puts its iOS application course on iTunes University. Not only with all the lectures, but all the courseware, all the study guides, even the tests, you can take that course for free right now as a smart 16-year-old. And maybe that's the thing to do and see if this really is something uh, that you want to do. Uh, undergraduate should really be a sampler. It's a time for you to sort of stretch out and say, yeah, well, I, I, I might have interest here. I agree. Now, there is one thing that I, I, I really want to reinforce, and that is do not, please, please, please do not put your child hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt to go to university. If, oh, that's a really big one. Please don't do that, it. And that is sad that college costs so much here. Uh, you know, it, 
in, there are countries in the world like Germany and Sweden where you get a free college yeah. education. And those countries are doing really well economically because they have such an educated workforce. The good news again is you don't have to go to college to get a college yes, education. Precisely. And absolutely do not spend hundreds of thousands of dollars if you can't afford it. Do not go in debt for that just to get that college degree. I don't think it's that useful, frankly. It's not, no, it's not because you get a couple of extra letters, but you are going to be matched up against people who maybe have more real-world experience right. than you. How many degrees do you have? A few. How many I've, master's but, okay, degrees? But I had to. I was, I, they, they told me to. So <laughs> They told me to do it. <laughs> Come on, tell us. How many? Like, yeah. I mean, like four, five. Somewhere. Four or five? Yeah, Postgraduate degrees? Yeah. But I mean, I got bored. And basically my education is free. It's amazing I'm, for guys 20 years old. How would you get five <laughs> postgraduate degrees? You don't have time you, for you that. You do them at the same time. You do oh, them concurrently. Oh, okay, simultaneously. Yeah. Email number two, another one about kids. Oh, this one. <laughs> okay, this is the question I hear from uh. every parent of a 12-year-old. My 12-year-old son wants to start, he says gaming on YouTube, but what he wants to do is a YouTube channel about gaming, right? right? We were all set to purchase a 32-inch TV at Best Buy, but when we got there... A Geek Squad employee told us monitors have a faster response time than TVs. Well, he's right. You probably shouldn't use a TV mm -hmm. for this. They also cost, cost more. Our kid had an eye on a 32-inch quad HD monitor that cost $380, which, by the way, is remarkable for that size and price, but it's still more than right. they wanted to spend. We've come to find we also need a capture card, which we're having a little bit of trouble choosing. I want to make sure that we're completely informed of everything we have to purchase in order for him to be able to do this at a reasonable price. I'd appreciate any help. Nicole, you are a great mom. Uh, every 12-year-old in the world wants to start a YouTube channel on Minecraft. That's like just the thing. Uh, so the kind of thing he's talking about are called Let's Play videos. Right. And you've seen these. If he's watching it, you're watching it. You see the game on the full screen, and inset into the game is the gamer talking. Sometimes it's showing stuff. Sometimes it's playing along. PewDiePie made this famous right. and made millions of dollars on YouTube doing this. I don't know if that's really a great way for your 12-year-old to start. What do you recommend? Okay, so what I would recommend is that people always want to get want to get the most powerful machine with the, the best accessories and then make that their single station for broadcasting. That's not a good idea. What you want to do is get a moderate machine, and probably even something you already have. You run XSplit Broadcaster on it with a $80 capture card from Avermedia. Don't spend a lot of money. Don't Avermedia spend a lot makes of money. cheap ones. They're good. Very inexpensive. Works perfectly. And what's the software? Uh, XSplit Broadcaster. X S P L I T broadcaster. Right, right. Okay. and that's free, so you can get that for free. Okay, it will allow you to do up to four inputs, so you can do the capture card plus, say, three USB cameras, and you can run it wow. like our TriCaster. You, you just basically got a switcher. Right, and that software has hooks for Facebook, for YouTube, for Twitter. You can broadcast to any of those platforms anything that comes into the HDMI input. So don't be confused. You don't need a big screen TV. It looks like they're sitting in front of a big screen yeah. TV. They're not. Nope. That's an inset of one camera pointed at them and another camera, in effect, a virtual camera recording the screen. That's how they're doing it. doesn't matter how big your screen is. Precisely. And, and XSplit will let you do layering, so you could take the game and put it behind you. It's, it's all just oh, a special cool. effect. That's nice. What that frees you to do is now you can play on console, you can play on PC, and it's just anything that's plugged in at that time is what you're broadcasting. And his PC is doing the recording, and then he edits it later on the PC. Well, no, the, the, the same machine that does the broadcasting will also do the recording. So he can stream it live, mm -hmm. or he can record it. Actually, if you use YouTube Live, it'll record it for Precisely. you. Precisely. But you may want to edit it. Sometimes people yeah. want to edit yeah. it and, and polish it up. Here's the good news. You've got a really smart 12-year-old, Nicole. Obviously, he's very motivated, loves to play games, and he wants to take it to the next level. He just doesn't want to sit there and passively play the game. He wants to really play with it and broadcast and have, and, and that's wonderful. So you want to encourage him, but you don't need to go crazy spending a lot of money right. doing this. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, there's skills he's going to learn, like editing video, how to speak, you know, fluently on the air, how to meet people and interact with them, those are all going to be great skills for life in yes. general. And so much more than just learning what the best pickaxe is to use in Minecraft, I think. <laughs> Although, if it were me, I would go for the... the well, stone is going to fall apart. Oh, diamond. You want a you diamond. Want diamond. I think you yeah. always want to get... Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other you know, we need a video of that. We do. We do. <laughs> the other thing she asked about was the monitor. And she's right. If you buy a TV, you can no, get those a are terrible TV. monitors. They're not great for you, right? Yeah. And I mean, they're bad for your eyes. That's what I right. use at home. 
I have the same size monitor that I borrowed from you and it's currently on my desk here. The 43 inch monitor you have at home? Uh, yes, but but that's a TV, a TV versus this. This is a monitor. So much crisper. You see the difference. Yeah. And it's just much less eye strength. It's not just refresh rate, it's the size yeah. of the pixels, it's the quality of the image. A TV's for watching TV, a monitor's for computing. Yeah. And, it, and I know people say, well, but look how cheap this TV is. Well, there's a reason. Don't it's, do it. It's for watching Netflix, it's Don't not do for it. doing that. Yeah. So yeah, you, you probably already have a computer. He can do it on the. Can you do it on a Mac, or does it have to be? Uh, no, with that's it? A, that's the nice thing about it. Uh, because it's just an HDMI input, anything that's HDMI will work. Oh. Doesn't matter what platform, okay. console, PC, HDMI laptop, out. desktop. Just okay. plug it in. Very good. See, I'm glad we had Robert here to explain this all to you. This is. Uh, we're gonna miss you when you're gone, but Don't you're not gone thing. yet. No, no, a year. No, I have no, a year. No. I have an entire <laughs> <Okay>. year. <laughs> Almost. I'm counting the days, though. It's terrible, <laughs> terrible news. We, we really love having Father Robert Ballas there here, the digital Jesuit. But you know what? I understand why they want you back in, uh, in Rome, because you're an amazing fellow, and I know you're going to do a lot of great stuff for the church there. We'll say a real goodbye September yes. or August and of 2018. I've been telling people, because they've been asking what I'm going to be doing, I am the official papal food tester. <laughs> there you go. There's not going to be anything left for Francis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll have a little more of that. That was pretty good. <laughs> I like cheeses. Please bring out the cheeses. <laughs> we do the new screensaver Saturday afternoons, 3 p.m. As we mentioned next week, it's Megan Maroney, but all of our hosts end up playing, and I love that. If you want to stop by and, and watch us live, you can. Just email tickets at twit.tv. We really want to urge you to do that. We now close the studio on different days. Sometimes I'm not here. We really want to make sure you get what you're expecting, so email tickets at twit.tv. We'll make sure that you have a map, uh, all the information you need, and we'll let you know if the studio is open that day or closed that day. That's really important. Tickets at twit.tv. You know, you don't have to be here in studio, though. You can always watch our live stream anytime. We're 24-7 at twit.tv slash live or our alternate stream at live.twit.tv. And if you do that, join us in the chat room. Every minute of every hour of every day, there is somebody in the chat room. Oh, yes. Talking, having fun. Our Australians are in there overnight. It's at irc.twit.tv. You can do that in your browser if you have an IRC client. That's even better. Now, if you can't watch live, you can't be in the chat room, you just have to do this on demand. Don't worry, on demand audio and video of everything we do is always made available at our website, twit.tv. But the best way to get this is to subscribe. If you use your favorite podcast appliance, whether it's iTunes or Pocket Cast or Stitcher, or Slacker, you can even use your Amazon Echo. Just say, Echo, listen to the new screensavers on TuneIn. It'll play the most recent episode. Subscription's the best, though. That way you've always got the fresh episode waiting on your phone or your tablet or your computer for you to watch and enjoy. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on the new screensavers. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.